Well, good morning, saints of God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I, for one, am determined to rejoice and be glad in it. It's Thankful Thursday, October the 8th, 2020. And has not our God been faithful in that he's spared us and afforded us another day's journey? First and foremost, as always, to my fellowship family, and then to all of you friends and loved ones who tune in with regularity to our morning meditations. We greet you in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. My hopes and prayers, as always, is that you've awakened and done your self-check, assessing yourself, determining that all things considered, you're doing okay. And following up, as always, wanting to make sure that you're doing okay, mind, body, and soul. Allow me, without delay, to jump in uh, to our uh, word today that we're going to meditate on. It's birthed out of Isaiah. And there is in that 54th chapter of Isaiah what may reign as a very familiar passage to those who frequent Bible country. Isaiah 54, that last and final verse in the chapter is the 17th verse. And it reads this way. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And that's the word of God. The word of God indeed is blessed. Isaiah 54, verse number 17. Saints, let me say this. It needs to be clearly understood uh, and embraced that a believer should understand with crystal clarity um, without being stressed out that as a Christian, you're engaged in spiritual warfare. Unless that is something that is understood and accepted, you'll find yourself stressed out, ultimately wearied, worried, and wanting to prove yourself against attacks. But when you get it, when you finally get it, you'll understand that because you are saved, because you're a believer, because you are a Christian, you're engaged in a dramatic, drawn out, demonic duel, pitting God and his army against the devil and his imps. It is a, a war that has been started well before you and I came on the scene. And it's an eternal warfare that will go on and on throughout eternity until God decides that enough is enough. You and I must understand, saints of God, we didn't start it. And God has really already finished it in that we've got victory against our adversary. But we've got to show up every day for battle, understanding that this is a spiritual contest, a spiritual warfare. And unless the Christian, the believer, understands the nature of the warfare, he'll be caught up, wearied, worried, and wanting to prove himself. Paul makes it plain that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty unto God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought. You'll find that in 2 Corinthians 
And in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, he makes it plain that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, and he admonishes us to put on the whole armor of God. We are engaged in an ongoing warfare. But when you're clear as to what side you're fighting for, you can have some peace even in the midst of the peril that's going on around you. And that is the case for the believer. And we find proof of it right here in this text for consideration this morning. Literally, God says through the prophet Isaiah to his people, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And so many people uh, in quoting this passage, leave it right there. But I find comfort in finishing the entirety of the passage because not only does um, it tell us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Look at what it says. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I, I thought that was so powerful. And again, so often we quote the A clause, but we leave out the B and the C clause. And I want to read it again in your hearing. And I want to do so uh, from the New English translation, because uh, if you are not excited yet, listen to what he says through the Eng New English translation. Here it is. No weapon forged to be used against you will succeed. You'll refute everyone who tries to accuse you. This is what the Lord will do for his servants. Get this. I will vindicate them, says the Lord. You got to get this. And if you're not celebrating yet, you got to understand what's being said here. Because we are a part of God's army and we're in demonic warfare, dueling against the devil and his imps, you got to understand what is being said is that weapons are not guaranteed not to be formed. Or as the New English translation says, forged to be used against us. The good news is that they won't succeed. They won't prosper. And so for those who are always uh, worrying about what the adversary, what the devil is doing by way of his next move, you're wasting your time because the devil is dutiful if nothing else. He's always busy doing something always busy trying to create a way uh, to catch you up, to do something that is so diabolical and demonic that it uh, discourages you to the point where um, you become so worried and wearied that you give up, not remembering that you've already won. The weapon will be formed. The devil ultimately has so many different wiles, says Paul in Ephesians, the wiles of the devil. But don't worry yourself about what he's doing. Understand he's diligent in his duties. And if one weapon doesn't work, he's going to try to form another one that will work. But the good news that we have in this text is that while the weapon will be formed or forged, it won't work. Now get this. He says, you will refute everyone that tries to accuse you. In other words, God will do the vindicating. You just do what you're supposed to do. It's a natural proclivity, saints, especially when you're under attack to want to fight back and vindicate yourself. This text gives us 
a great assurance that that's not our job. Ultimately, the devil's going to do his job. He and his demonic imps are going to attack. They're going to create and try uh, to come up with something to impugn your integrity, to uh, ultimately knock you off your axis as a believer. But the good news is you do your job. And that is to stand, having done all to stand. Just stand, Paul says in Ephesians, anyhow. Having your loins girt about you with truth. Because ultimately, God's job is to vindicate us. Why, you ask? He says, because you're my servants. Why, you ask? He says, ultimately, because, get this, I'll vindicate you, says the Lord, because you're my heritage. In other words, his name is on the line. It's never about us who are soldiers in the army. It's about God. We are soldiers in God's army. And it's God's army. And because it's God's army, his name is on the line. You and I are but mere representatives of God's army. And because we're his heritage, his name is on the line. Let me give you this last piece of good news and I'm done. Uh, I'm going to have to preach this. This is good stuff. Get this. The battle has already been won. We've got victory through Jesus Christ. And the devil knows it, and he wants to make you and I forget it. Remember, on Calvary's cross, Satan was all but defeated. In fact, death and the grave was overcome at Calvary. The scriptures declare, thanks be to God who giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ. Jesus died. But then he defeated death because he rose again. The ultimate weapon was defeated at the cross. And that's why you and I don't ever have to worry about weapons being formed. The devil's going to do what he does and that's form weapon after weapon. Wiles of the devil are tricks. If one trick doesn't work, he's coming with another trick. But at the end of the day, don't worry about it. whatever weapons that are formed, they won't work. They won't prosper. And every believer has to walk in that assurance. And that's some blessed assurance. That's all I got for you today. I hope that enriched you and blessed you because just revisiting this passage blessed me. No weapon formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise up against you, uh, you shall condemn. And the way you condemn it is by you keeping um, steady pace with walking the way God wants you to walk and let him fight our battles. I'm done. Let's pray. Father, in the rich and righteous name of Jesus, our Christ, do we pray. First, thankful and grateful for another day recognizing that no day, especially in this season, is promised to us. But since you blessed us with another one, we're going to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for it. Thank you, God, for keeping us all last night as we slumbered and slept. Thank you, God, that you encamped angels around our bedside. And as the songwriter says, all night and all day, angels are watching over us. Thank you, God, that we don't ever have to pace the floors at night worrying about weapons that are being formed because they will be formed. Thank you that we have the assurance that even when weapons are formed, we don't have to worry because they won't prosper, they won't succeed. And so God, with this kind of confidence, we thank you that we as your people can be walking, talking examples of your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. God, we come now asking that you would keep us throughout the further parts of this day. 
allow us to marinate on these truths and allow us, O oh God, uh, to meditate on this word this morning. When all is said and done, God, let us give you the glory, the honor and the praise for it all. For it's in the rich name of Jesus, our elder brother and our savior, the Christ we pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Saints, I know this blessed you today. I know this blessed you because it blessed me. I'm, I'm excited about the fact that God is ultimately in charge and God ultimately uh, has given us the victory through Jesus Christ. That being said, if this blessed you like it blessed me, like it, share it, and make sure you're subscribed to the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, um, our um, YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook. We kick out some uh, great ministry here and I thank and praise God for it. That being said, I look forward to seeing you on tomorrow. Until then, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord cause his face to shine on you and give you peace is my prayer.